Hello, today I will be delivering a lecture on alternative medical systems. I have divided my lecture into eight sections. The first section of my lecture will delve with meaning and definition of alternative medicine. The second section of my lecture will center on the features of alternative medicine. The third section of my lecture will highlight the differences between alternative medicines and complementary alternative medicines. I will then move on to the fourth section of my lecture where I will expatiate on categorization of complementary and alternative medicines. The fifth section of my lecture will shed light on the range of alternative medical systems. The sixth section of my lecture will deal with the importance of alternative medicines. The seventh section of this lecture will highlight the various factors posing challenges to the integration of alternative medicine. Finally, that is in the eighth section of my lecture, I will then discuss the future of complementary alternative medicines, which will be followed by a conclusion. According to Memon Shakil in his joint work, Alternative System of Medicine in India, he noted that alternative medicine is a term commonly used to include all the healing practice that does not fall within the realm of conventional medicine. It can be defined as a variety of therapeutic or preventive healthcare practices such as homeopathy, naturopathy, chiropractic and herbal medicine that do not follow generally accepted medical methods and may not have a scientific explanation for their effectiveness. Alternative medicine has been used in various countries like India and China much before the development of present day medical science. These include practices which may be based on traditional medicine, folk knowledge, spiritual beliefs or newly conceived approaches to healing. Alternative medicine is the term for medical products and practices that are not part of standard care. Standard care is what medical doctors, doctors of osteopathy and allied health professionals such as nurses and physical therapists practice. Alternative medicine is used in place of standard medical care. According to World Health Organization, the terms Complementary medicine or alternative medicine are used interchangeably with traditional medicine in some countries. They refer to a broad set of healthcare practices that are not part of that country's own tradition and are not integrated into the dominant healthcare system. According to the works of Eskenazi, alternative medicines may be defined as an extensive set of healthcare practices that are not directly integrated into the dominant healthcare model as they pose challenges to wide ranging beliefs of the society as well as the integrated practices that is the cultural, economic, scientific, medical and educational. According to Dr. S. K. Tal in his article Complementary and Alternative Medicine An Overview. Complementary and Alternative Medicine refers to a broad range of healing philosophies, approaches and therapies that exist largely outside the institutions where conventional health care is taught and provided. According to the definition used by Cochrane Collaboration, Complementary and Alternative Medicine is a broad domain of healing resources that encompasses all health systems, modalities, practices and their accompanying theories and beliefs other than those intrinsic to the politically dominant health system of a particular society or culture in a given historical period. Complementary and alternative medicine includes all such practices and ideas defined by their users as preventing or treating illness or promoting health and well-being. 
After this brief understanding on the meanings of alternative medicine and complementary alternative medicine, we will now look at the various features of alternative medicines in the following section. The term alternative medicine means any form of medicine that is outside the mainstream of western medicine as practiced by the majority of doctors today. Alternative medicine exists in all cultures to some degree and terms such as traditional medicine, indigenous medicine or folk medicine etc. are used to describe such practices. There are various features of alternative medicine. The features are as follows. Number one, it considers the health of a person as well-being in its physical, mental, social and spiritual domain, whereas modern medicine treats the body as a machine, that is main emphasis is laid upon the physical aspects of life. Nowadays, it has been established that there is a certain link between the various dimensions of life. Mental, social and spiritual arenas have its definite role on the physical human body. Hence, to achieve permanent cure and to maintain good health, one has to readjust the other aspects of human life too. Health is defined as a state of physical well-being, mental alertness, socially adjusted and spiritually developed. Number two, most of the systems under alternative medicine stress upon the maintenance of health by following healthy lifestyles. That is, they stress upon proper diet, exercise, human relations, sexuality, positive attitudes, clean environment, moral and spiritual values, etc. Thus, preventive and promotive aspects of health are given its due importance. The person is made conscious to maintain his total health. Number three, the practices are simple and it avoids the intake of potent and hard drugs. It rejects the patients to undergo unnecessary diagnostic and surgical interference. Every system in alternative medicine has its own unique philosophy and inexpensive methods of diagnosis and treatment. Number four, it has very less or no side effects. Number five, the traditional system of medicine provides a logical alternative to the patients instead of using biomedicines. Alternative medicines provides an answer to most of the diseases which have no amenable answer from modern medical treatment such as collagen disorder, degenerative diseases, diseases of the bones and joints, psychosomatic disorders, the behavioral, emotional and spiritual factors have a major role. Number six, the sum total of above reasoning has produced a positive faith in alternative medicine among the people. It is well known fact to all doctors that faith often cures when medicines don't. More and more persons hence turn to other systems with faith in their hearts and prayer on their lips and this has a magical power that can move mountains. Thus, there are various features of alternative medicines. It can be said that faith in hearts, prayers and lips possess a magical power for the healing of the individuals. According to arthritis research, UK, complementary and alternative medicine comprises of various factors such as number one, it tends to be holistic and includes therapies from various historical and cultural backgrounds. Number two, it often needs the patient to take an active part in their own treatment with lifestyle changes, example diet, exercise, meditation. Number three, it features therapies that are diverse in nature and origins. The ways in which these therapies are thought to work are also diverse. Although many are based on the idea of enabling your body's ability to heal itself. 
On the other hand, conventional medicine also comprises of various factors such as number one, it mainly focuses on understanding and correcting the underlying problems that are causing the symptoms within the patients. Number two, it is often criticized for treating the patient's condition and not the patient as a person. It expects the patient to accept the diagnosis and treatment. Number three, it recognizes the importance of the patient's involvement and choice in their treatment. It is by these ways one can differentiate between complementary alternative medicine and alternative medicine. According to Sanjay Kumar Pal in his article, Complementary and Alternative Medicine and Overview, Complementary and Alternative Medicine has been classified into seven major categories, which are number one, mind-body medicine, number two, alternative medical systems, number three, lifestyle and disease prevention, number four, biologically based therapies, number five, manipulative and body-based systems, number six, biofield, and number seven, bioelectromagnetics. Mind-body medicine involves behavioral, psychological, social, and spiritual approaches to health. It is divided into four subcategories. Number one, mind-body system. Number two, mind-body methods. Example, yoga, hypnosis, meditation. Number three, religion and spirituality. Example, conf confession, spiritual healing, prayer. And number four, social and contextual areas. Example, holistic nursing, intuitive diagnosis, community-based approaches. Alternative medical systems involve complete systems of theory and practice that have been developed outside the Western biomedical approaches. They are divided into four subcategories. Number one, acupuncture and oriental medicine. Number two, traditional indigenous systems as for example, Ayurvedic medicine, Siddha, Yunani, Native American medicine, Kampu medicine, traditional African medicine. Number three, unconventional Western systems, as for example, homeopathy, orthomolecular medicine, functional medicine, environmental medicine. And number five, naturopathy. Lifestyle and disease prevention category involves theories and practices designed to prevent the development of illness, identity, and treat risk factors or support the healing and recovery process. This system is concerned with integrated approaches for the prevention and management of chronic disease in general or the common determinants of chronic disease. It is divided into three subcategories. Number one, clinical prevention practices like for example, electrodermal diagnosis, medical intuition, chirography, number two, lifestyle therapies, and number three, health promotion. Biologically based therapy includes natural and biologically based practices, interventions, and products. Many overlap with conventional medicine's use of dietary supplements. This category is divided into four subcategories. Number one, phytotherapy or herbalism, that is plant-derived preparations that are used for therapeutic and prevention purpose. Example, ginkgo biloba, garlic, ginseng, turmeric, aloe vera, bee pollen, mistletoe. Number two, special diet therapies, as for example, vegetarian, high fiber, Mediterranean natural hygiene. Number three, orthomolecular medicine, that is products used as nutritional and food supplements and are not covered in other categories. These are usually used in combinations for prevention or therapeutic purpose. For example, ascorbic acid, carotins, folic acid, vitamin A, ribofablin, lysine, iron, probiotics, biotin. 
and number four, pharmacological, biological and instrumental interventions. Manipulative and body-based systems are based on manipulation and or movement of the body. They are divided into three subcategories. Number one, chiropractic medicine. Number two, message and body work. And number three, unconventional physical therapies. Biofield medicine involves systems that use subtle energy fields in and around the body for medical purpose. That is therapeutic touch, Reiki and external Qigong. Bioelectromagnetics refers to the unconventional use of electromagnetic fields for medical purposes. Thus, there are many ways by which one can divide the different alternative medicines as well as complementary alternative medical systems. Each subsystem tries to promote people with a range of other alternatives which an individual can choose instead of biomedicine. There are various ranges of alternative medical systems present in the present century. Each system of alternative medicine lies on the faith structure of the people. I would like to discuss the various alternative medical systems present in the society. Number one, acupressure. Acupressure is an ancient healing art using the fingers to gradually press key healing points which stimulate the body's natural self-curative abilities. Acupressure was developed in Asia over 5000 years ago. Using the power and sensitivity of the hand, acupressure therapy is effective in the relief of stress-related ailments and is ideal for self-treatment and preventive health care for boosting the immune system. Acupressure releases tension, increases circulation, reduces pain and develops spirituality and vibrant health. Number two, acupuncture. Acupuncture involves the insertion of extremely thin needles through your skin at strategic points on your body. A key component of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture is most commonly used to treat pain. Number three, aromatherapy. It is also referred to as essential oil therapy and can be defined as the art and science of utilizing naturally extracted aromatic essences from plants to balance, harmonize and promote the health of body, mind and spirit. It seeks to unify physiological, psychological and spiritual processes to enhance an individual's innate healing process. Number four, astrology. It plays an important part in bringing about healing of the people as the position of the planets is believed to affect the health condition of the people. Number five, Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic medicine also known as Ayurveda is one of the world's oldest holistic whole body healing system. It was developed thousands of years ago in India. It is based on the belief that health and wellness depend on a delicate balance between the mind, body and spirit. The primary focus of Ayurvedic medicine is to promote good health rather than fight disease. Number six, auricular therapy. Auricular therapy is a healing practice dating back to the third century wherein the practitioner uses needles at acupuncture points on the outer ear that correspond to specific parts of the human body. This technique is particularly effective treatment for many conditions including addictions, mood disorders, obesity, pain and musculoskeletal and central nervous system disorders. Number seven, autogenic training. It is a technique that teaches your body to respond to your verbal commands. This commands tell your body to relax and control breathing, blood pressure, heartbeat and body temperature. The goal of autogenic training is to achieve deep relaxation 
and reduce stress. After you learn the technique, you can use it whenever you need or want relief from symptoms of stress or you can practice it regularly to enjoy the benefits of deep relaxation and prevent the effects of chronic stress. Number 8. Holotrophic Breathwork It is a powerful approach to self-exploration and healing that integrates insights from modern consciousness research, anthropology, various depth psychologies, transpersonal psychology, Eastern spiritual practices and mystical traditions of the world. The name holotrophic means literally moving towards wholeness. Number 9. Back flower remedies are solutions of brandy and water. The water containing extreme dilutions of flower material developed by Edward Back, an English homeopath in the 1930s. Back believed that dew found on flower petals retain imagined healing properties of that plant. The remedies are intended primarily for emotional and spiritual conditions. Number 10, chromotherapy, sometimes called color therapy or chromatherapy, is an alternative medicine system which is considered pseudoscience. Chromotherapists claim to be able to use light in the form of color to balance energy lacking from a person's body, whether it be on the physical, emotional, spiritual or mental levels. Number 11, Electropathy. Electropathy is a new system of medicine by which balance is maintained between lymph and blood of a diseased person. Hence, by regulating the lymph and blood in the body, the patient gets cured. This alternative form of medicine uses extracts from plants which regulate both lymph and blood. Electrohomeopathy was discovered in 1865 in Italy. Number 12, Feng Shui. Feng Shui is an ancient art and science developed over 3000 years ago in China. It is a complex body of knowledge that reveals how to balance the energies of any given space to assure health and good fortune for people inhabiting it. Number 13, Herbalism. It is use of plants for medicinal purposes and the study of such use. Plants have been the basis for medical treatments through much of the human history and such traditional medicine is still widely practiced today. Modern medicine recognizes herbalism as a form of alternative medicine as the practice of herbalism is not strictly based on evidence gathered using the scientific method. Number 14, homeopathy is a system of alternative medicine created in 1796 by Samuel Hahnemann based on his doctrine of like cures like. It claims that a substance that causes the symptoms of a disease in healthy people would cure similar symptoms in sick people. Number 15, Reiki. Reiki is a Japanese technique for stress reduction and relaxation that also promotes healing. It is administered by laying on hands and is based on the idea that an unseen life force energy flows through us and is what causes us to be alive. If one's life force energy is low, then we are more likely to get sick or feel stress and if it is high, we are more capable of being happy and healthy. Number 16, Therapeutic Touch is derived from an ancient technique called laying on of hands. It is based on the premise that it is the healing force of the therapist that affects the patient's recovery. Healing is promoted when the body's energies are in balance and by passing their hands over the patient, healers can identify energy imbalances. Number 17. Osteopathic medicine is a form of conventional medicine that in part emphasizes diseases arising in the musculoskeletal system. There is an underlying belief that all of the body's systems work together 
and disturbances in one system may affect function elsewhere in the body. Some osteopathic physicians practice osteopathic manipulation, a full body system of hands on techniques to alleviate pain, restore function and promote health and well-being. Number 18, naturopathic medicine or naturopathy is an alternative medical system. Naturopathic medicine proposes that there is a healing power in the body that establishes, maintains and restores health. Practitioners work with the patient with the goal of supporting this power through treatments such as nutrition and lifestyle counseling, dietary supplements, medicinal plants, exercise, homeopathy and treatments from traditional Chinese medicine. Number 19, traditional Chinese medicine is the current name for an ancient system of healthcare from China. Traditional Chinese medicine is based on a concept of balanced qi or vital energy that is believed to flow throughout the body. Qi is proposed to regulate a person's spiritual, emotional, mental and physical balance and to be influenced by the opposing forces of yin that is negative energy and yang that is positive energy. Other than these alternative medical systems, there are other varieties of alternative medical systems which play a major role in healing the people of different societies. Therefore, these alternative healing practices do play a major role in the lives of the individuals. The only thing that is required out of the individuals is belief, faith and entrusting their trust on these alternative healing practices. Alternative medicine is one of the most popular systems of healing among the people. One can note various importance of alternative medicine. Again referring to the work of Shujai Kumar Pal in his article Complementary and Alternative Medicine and Overview, it was found that the increasing popularity of complementary and alternative medicine reflects changing needs and values in modern society in general. This includes a rise in the prevalence of chronic diseases, an increase in public access to worldwide health information, reduced tolerance for paternalism, an increased sense of entitlement to quality life, declining faith that scientific breakthrough will have relevance for the personal treatment of disease, and an increased interest in spiritualism. In addition, Concern about the diverse effect and skyrocketing cost of conventional health care are fueling the search for alternative approaches to the prevention and management of illness. Few assumptions have been proposed to explain the use of alternative medicine. Number one, dissatisfaction. Patients are dissatisfied with conventional treatment because it has been ineffective, has produced adverse side effects or is seen as impersonal, too technologically oriented and or too costly. Number two, need for personal control. Patients seek alternative therapies because they see them as less authoritarian with more personal autonomy and control over their health care decisions. Number three, philosophical congruence. Alternative therapies are attractive because they are seen as more compatible with patients' values, worldview, spiritual religious philosophy or beliefs regarding the nature and meaning of health and illness. Therefore, the use of alternative medicine is gradually rising in the modern 21st century. People, in spite of being scientific, do realize that alternative medicines are also beneficial as they meet their healing purpose as well as their spiritual purpose. There are several factors by which the system of alternative medicine is at stake at the modern century. The challenges to alternative medical system can be categorized under three main headings. Firstly, political factors. The interaction of politics 
and healthcare is extensive, complex and inevitable because healthcare is such a fundamental aspect of national economies which affects the health status of the people. Regulatory issues are a subset of political issues as regulations are a product of government agencies. In the US, Food and Drug Administration oversees products and devices used in the practice of medicine. For complex political and legal reasons, botanical medicines and dietary supplements have become essentially unregulated. They need not meet quality control standards and scientific information need not be provided on the packaging of these products which may put the public at risk. Secondly, the economic factors. In most countries, the economic potential of growing alternative medicine markets has meant that much businesses and research interest in alternative medicine to date has been focused on specific techniques and products that can be marketed. In China, the government has launched a program implementing schedules for the development of new products. Government and academic representatives have visited the US to indicate their eagerness to collaborate and to follow proper methodology. As for example, double bind randomized clinical trials. In the US, the healthcare industry, as the major players define it, is one of the most lucrative American enterprises. Thirdly, scientific factors. Science is not a field of study but a method of observation that must be tailored to the object or phenomenon being studied. Most alternative medicine research is conducted outside of academia by individuals with limited research training and resources and their investigations are often methodologically inadequate. Conversely, those alternative medicine studies deemed methodologically sound may lack comparability and replicability. For example, lack of funding and differences among individual investigators resources and personal research interest have limited replication of hundreds of studies in homeopathy and acupuncture. Throughout the world, Patients in unprecedented numbers are going outside of conventional medicine to look for health. This is a movement that has been building up since the late 1960s. Many alternative therapies are now moving to the hospital sector. Yoga, for example, is being tried out for the management of carpal tunnel syndrome. Yoga lifestyle intervention is also found to increase the regression of coronary arthrosclerosis in patients with severe coronary artery disease. Hypnosis is being tried out in cancer clinics for the management of pain. The American Medical Association and other medical associations have formally recognized hypnosis as a viable medical treatment. Clinical outcome and research papers in several areas of complementary therapies now find a place in orthodox medical journals and it is no longer possible to maintain the traditional medical stance that referring patients to the complementary therapist is unethical. The rapid increase in the public interest and use of complementary and alternative therapies is exerting a powerful influence on medical education and has gained ground in several medical universities. A significant number of medical students want instructions in complementary therapies. Medical educators increasingly realize that it is not a question of whether to address these issues in the education of future physicians, but rather how to respond to these relentless challenges. Key policy issue of integrating complementary and alternative medicine with mainstream medicine has been outlined by Commonwealth Health Ministers. The Ministers established the Commonwealth Working Group on traditional and complementary health systems to promote the integration of traditional health systems 
and complementary medicine international health care. It can be concluded that nearly 80% of world's population does not have access to modern medicine. These alternative medicine and complementary and alternative medicine thus acts as ways by which they can have an access to a range of medical facilities. The economically deprived nations are especially the ones who utilizes this alternative medicine and complementary alternative medicine mechanisms to heal themselves from the pathology they are suffering from. Thus, one must strive to achieve both the traditional alternative medical practices as well as the western biomedicine as both of them have their own strength and weaknesses. Thank you.